Hello and welcome to Krishi Jagran Business platform that keeps you updated with all the agri news of the nation. This is Yash Saxena. Let's have a quick look at the day's headline. PM urges to make millets a food choice for future at the opening ceremony of International Year of Millets 2023 at Italy. Anurag Thakur inaugurates India's first drone skill training conference and drone yatra. National Dairy Development Board and Amul to help boost Sri Lanka's dairy industry. Good news for the farmers, Origo Imandi and Vivriti Capital join hands to provide finance to FPOs and farmers. If MC launches a great insecticide, Takibi for farmers. Kheti selected for Prince Williams the Earth Short Prize in the Protect and Restore Nature category. PM Modi to dedicate three national Ayush institutes for strengthening the medical system of nation. India to make investment in R&D to develop a roadmap for design and delivery of vaccines, says Union Minister Dr. Jitendra Singh. Odisha government plans to train 2,000 women in rubber slipper manufacturing. Security of food fuel among key issues discussed at G20 Sherpas meeting in Udaipur. More than 100 stalls put up as 10-day Nawad fair begins at Patna. Regional Agricultural Research Station Agri Project bags third prize at AgriTech Conference 2022 in Vishakhapatna. Former Union Minister and Economist Yoginder K. Alag passes away at 83. Elon Musk's Neuralink under investigation for animal deaths. Weather update, Delhi witnesses continuous fall in temperature. Let's have a look at the news in detail. At the opening ceremony of the International Year of Millets at the headquarters of the Food and Agricultural Organization in Italy today, Prime Minister Narendra Modi conveyed his message to include millets in your daily diet. Union Minister of State for Agriculture and Farmers Welfare, Ms. Shova Karandalaje, represented India at the opening ceremony in Rome and read the Prime Minister's message to the August gathering. In his message, PM congratulated the United Nations and the Food and Agriculture Organization for the launch of the International Year of Millet 2023. He also expressed his appreciation to the different member nations who supported our proposal to mark the International Year of Millets. Earlier this week, Union Commerce and Industry Minister Piyush Goyal attended the Millets Smart Nutritive Food Conclave in New Delhi. The conclave was a pre-launch event of the International Year of Millets 2023. The Ministry of Commerce and Industry, through its Apex Agricultural Export Promotion Body, the Agricultural and Processed Food Products Export Development Authority, APEDA, organized this conclave to promote the export of millets. At the launch of India's first drone skilling and training virtual e-learning platform in Chennai yesterday, the Union Minister for Youth Affairs and Sports and Information and Broadcasting said, I am thrilled to launch Corona Aerospace Drone Yatra and first virtual e-learning platform. I was also impressed by the most advanced and well-equipped manufacturing facility. I can see the vision that our Prime Minister Narendra Modi had and what the country's youth is accomplishing daily. Anurag Thakur also inaugurated the first of 1,000 planned drone centers of excellence at Garona Aerospace Manufacturing Unit in Chennai, as well as Garona Aerospace Drone Yatra, dubbed as Operation 777, which is intended to educate and demonstrate the efficacy of drones for various agricultural uses across 777 districts in India. Kisan drones are the beginning of new age agricultural developments. This will not only benefit farmers, but will also create jobs for a variety of people across the nation. After months of political turmoil and food crisis, Sri Lanka has asked for technical assistance from India's National Dairy Development Board and market leader Amul to scale up its dairy production and become self-sufficient, reviving a collaboration that the island attempted but failed to pursue in the late 1990s. Officials from the National Dairy Development Board and Gujarat Cooperative Milk Marketing Federation, which markets milk under the Amul brand, have taken steps to provide technical assistance for milk production in Sri Lanka. Plans were discussed during Monday's meeting about doubling local milk production by implementing short and medium term plans and making Sri Lanka self-sufficient in milk in the long run through a targeted program according to the statements. 
और इको कमोडिटीज एंड विवृति कैपिटल कम टूगेदर टू लॉन्च अ न्यू ई मंडी कैश प्लेटफॉर्म टू प्रोवाइड बेटर फाइनेंस अपॉर्चुनिटीज टू फार्मर प्रोड्यूसर ऑर्गेनाइजेशन एंड फार्मर्स and other agricultural product suppliers the tie up between the agritech company orico commodities and fintech company vivriti capital would be useful in bridging the gap between the agri producers and nbfcs by creating an opportunity for them to get greater and hassle free access to financial support which would also aid banks to materialize agriculture priority sector lending the emandi cash app is set to be first of its kind which facilitates a full cycle of the supply chain including financing as an addition the app connects supplier from mandis to reach out to banks and nbfcs through digital means which makes the process a lot more hassle free the emandi cash app is solely supplier focused the partnership aims to finance agri producers up to 2 crores with convenient interest rate they intend to venture deeper into rural india furnishing loans up to rupees 100 crores by march 2023 the major causes of biotech stress on crops are insects or pests hence to control this a farmer needs good insecticide for this ifcoency has come up with its new product takibi protector and friend of several crops This is designed to kill, hurt, repel or mitigate one or more insect species known as insecticides. Additionally, it can be packed in various ways such as sprays, dust, gels and baits. Farmers must prioritize insect pest management. Scientists and experts propose using insecticides at the early stage of the afflicted crop to reduce production loss. Kethi an Indian startup that provides innovative yet simple farming solution has been named one of the five winners of this year's prestigious Earthshot prize an initiative of Prince William that awards a million pounds to each winner Kethi's greenhouse in a box is designed for small scale farmers and the crops they grow providing shelter for unpredictable elements and destructive pests Kethi one in the category protect and restore nature for providing a pioneering solution for local small holder farmers to reduce cost increase yield and protect livelihoods in a country on the front lines of climate change the prize is prince williams initiative to provide an impetus for environmental conservation by funding projects that provide innovative solutions to the ongoing climate change crisis by preventing and treating the root causes of chronic health problems ayurvedic remedies play a significant part in helping people achieve true health ayurveda has the potential to transform the modern healthcare ecosystem and make future medical systems more sustainable union minister of ayush sarvananda sonwal announced that prime minister narendra modi will dedicate three national ayush institutes all india institute of ayurveda goa National Institute of Unani Medicines Ghaziabad and National Institute of Homeopathy Delhi on December 11 2022 these satellite institutes will strengthen research and international collaborations and make ayush services more affordable to the larger community while addressing the media sarvananda sonawal also provided information about the 9th world ayurveda congress which will take place in Panjim Goa and will showcase the scientificity efficacy and strength of the Ayush system of medicines on a global scale Union Minister of State Science and Technology Dr Jitendra Singh said India will make a significant investment in R&D to develop a road map for the design and delivery of vaccine development for a future pandemic in his message to the two day international meet on preparedness for future epidemics is india ready to meet the coalition for epidemic preparedness innovations 100 days vaccine challenge dr jitendra singh said while efforts are still to uncover findings about covid-19 and the epidemiological models india is ready to invest in future challenges the conference on the 5th and 6th of december has been organized by the translational health science and technology institute and autonomous institute of the department of biotechnology ministry of science and technology faridabad in its campus at ncr biotech science cluster steps to empower women are being seen in every corner of the nation for this odisha government and the rubber chemical and petrochemical skill development council have joined hands to train women self help groups members in footwear manufacturing the primary goal of this collaboration is to improve livelihood opportunities for shg women members by promoting entrepreneurship and market focused skilling 
in footwear manufacturing. This collaboration will train and empower up to 2,000 women SHG members over the next two years to start their own micro manufacturing assembling units. In addition to skill training, the project envisions establishing at least 100 footwear manufacturing units by engaging 2000 skilled SHG members and facilitating credit linkage, branding and market connect including connections with large retailers or export houses. The second day of formal discussions among the Sherpas or representatives of head of state and government of the world's 20 largest economies had three sessions devoted to accelerated, inclusive and resilient growth, multilateralism and food, fuel and fertilizers or the three years and women-led development and tourism. Initiating the discussions, India's G20 Sherpa Amitabh Kant provided an overview of the country's priorities on these issues that will be further taken up by six working groups on agriculture, trade and investment, employment, anti-corruption, tourism and culture. Promoting the security of food, fuel and fertilizer supplies and reforms of multilateral institutions figured in deliberations among G20 Sherpas in the report on Tuesday, with the Indian side reiterating the need to reinforce collective actions to tackle these issues. A 10-day national level fair come exhibition organized by National Bank of Agriculture and Rural Development, Nabard Bihar Regional Office, began at Gandhi Maidan on Tuesday. It was inaugurated by Sanjeev Dayal, Regional Director, RBI Patna. Dayal appreciated the efforts made by Nabard through the fair and said, that India is a country of villages and it is very important for the development of the country. It is high time that rural entrepreneurs should be encouraged. Products of Bihar like Madhubani paintings, khadi clothes, shoes, silk saris, sattu, pickles, papar, sweets and various other decorative items attracted buyers. Cultural programs were also organized in which folk dance and nukkar nataks on financial awareness were staged by artists on the inaugural day of the fair. The agritourism project taken up by the Chintapalli Regional Agricultural Research Station got the third prize in the state-level conference Agritech 2022, which concluded on Monday at Achare NG Ranga Agricultural University in Guntu. As part of the seminar, various exhibitions were conducted and stalls were arranged at the venue. Around 110 stalls were set up coinciding with the seminar that was organized from 3rd to 5th December. Achare NG Ranga Agricultural Varsity got the first prize in the seminar, AP Raithu Sadika Samast bagged the second prize and the Chintapalli Research Station's project received the third prize. Chintapalli Research Station ADR Dr. M. Suresh Kumar said that its agritourism project would benefit the farmers concerning flower farming and commercial crops. The award was received by Suresh Kumar from Vice Chancellor Vishnu Vardhan Reddy and Vice Chairman Nagi Reddy. The nation is in deep sorrow. Professor Yoginder K. Alag, renowned economist, academic and former union minister, died at his home in Ahmedabad on Tuesday. Alag, who was 83, was a professor at Ahmedabad-based Sardar Patel Institute of Economic and Social Research. He was not keeping well for the couple of months, his son, Professor Manish Alag said. But his condition deteriorated in the last 20 to 25 days. He passed away at home. Alag probably represented the last of tribe of economists who straddled the world of academia and policy making with felicity and who, unlike most, did not confine his interest to one particular sector of the economy. We extend our sincere gratitude to the economist who straddled the world of academia and policy making and he will always be remembered by us. Elon Musk's Neuralink, a medical device company, is facing a federal probe for potential violation of animal welfare policies amid complaints that animal testing is being rushed to achieve results after missing several deadlines. This comes days after the world's richest man said he is comfortable implanting a Neuralink brain chip in himself. Neuralink Corporation is developing a brain implant it hopes will help paralyzed people walk again and cure other neurological ailments. The probe also comes amid growing dissent among Neuralink employees who claim that pressure from Elon Musk to accelerate development has resulted in botched experiment causing more animal deaths and sufferings. However, it is not clear whether the full scope of investigation covers the same alleged problems with animal testing identified by the Neuralink employees.
Due to heavy snowfall in the hilly areas, winter has further increased in Delhi and surrounding areas. This is the reason why the temperature here is continuously falling down. Not only this, the people here are also facing both fog and pollution. Dense fog remained in many areas here on Wednesday morning as well, whereas today AQI of Delhi was recorded at 329 which falls in very poor category. Today the minimum temperature in Delhi can be 8 degrees Celsius and the maximum temperature can be up to 25 degrees Celsius. This was all about the news. Let's take a look at the AgriQuiz question for the day. The question is on your screens. Which type of apomixis is found in citrus? A. Recurrent B. Polyembryony C. Vegetative or D. None of the above You can reply to us via an SMS on the number 8800-23204 For more updates on Agri News, stay tuned with Krishi Jagran Business This is Yash Saxena, signing off